We talk about Kung Fu Panda a lot on this channel, but when a trilogy is this good and the opportunity arises, we're gonna talk about it again. Oh, nice dramatic entrance. We've covered morality, but what about brains? Who among this action-packed cast is the most intelligent, and who is missing the most brain cells? Hey guys, I'm Brad with Wicked Binge, and this is Kung Fu Panda, dumb to brilliant. First, it's the practically brainless. This spot is reserved for those who have a less than average intelligence, to put it nicely. The gold medal of stupidity goes to the farmers. When they meet Kai, they're understandably terrified. Who wouldn't be when a giant beast appears out of nowhere and asks you if you would die if they stepped on you? But they also provoke Kai when they began gushing about Uguay being a legendary warrior. It isn't the farmer's fault exactly that they didn't know who Kai was. No one really did until Shifu found the scrolls explaining why Kai and Uguay went their separate ways. But it's hard to believe that they didn't notice how desperate Kai was to be recognized, and how much he would have been annoyed to have them gush over another fighter. The silver medal of stupid goes to Commander Batcher. He's in charge of a maximum security prison that was designed for one dangerous prisoner. But we have to rank him low due to his cockiness. You doubt my prison security? Batcher's pride resulted in Tai Lung escaping. The messenger didn't need to be given a tour of the facility, and Batcher knew that, but he wanted to show off and hopefully have Shifu off his back. Rather than taking the message as a personal insult to his competence, he should have been a professional and just taken the concern to heart. The bronze medal of dumb goes to the pandas. As cuddly and sweet as they are, they're also sheltered and naive. Pandas don't walk? We roll! When Poe's laying out plans for them, he makes the comment that he would have to go over all the details several more times, which was tough to accomplish when the pandas kept eating the stuff meant to represent them on the map. But we rank them higher than others on this list because of their ability to adapt. They didn't have any fighting experience, much preferring to hide after the conflict with Shen. But even with their lives being sheltered, they were able to channel their chi and help Poe while he was in the spirit realm, and that's pretty impressive. Next is the grade school students. These characters are capable of improving their craft or vile schemes, but have a way to go from the top. Next is Mei Mei. We place her above the rest of many of the other pandas because she shows more ambition than the others. I am Mei Mei. Mei Mei was able to develop her skills as a dancer and then use those same abilities to become a pretty impressive fighter. In a matter of hours, Mei Mei went from being unable to even hold nunchucks to being able to brandish a weapon and her ribbon at the same time, going in circles around the Jade Fighters. We still dock her down for her lack of awareness. She didn't grasp that Poe was uncomfortable about her interest, but at least she eventually eased off. Moving on to the Wolves henchmen to Shen, they just carried out orders and instilled fear in the masses while collecting metal. They didn't have any clear plans when it came to how they would thrive once Shen achieved his goal. They just appeared to be happy to have people afraid of them, which meant when Shen met his downfall, they had no backup plan as to how they would get by if they escaped the Kung Fu masters hunting them down. Next is the Average Folk. These guys are, as the name implies, pretty average in terms of intelligence. Not too smart, but not too dumb. Normies. Next, we have Poe's mother. We don't see her very long, but we can't argue how smart it was of her to hide Poe away among some vegetables. Not only was he out of sight from Shen and the wolves, but it meant that Poe would be carted off to a home where he would hopefully be safe and away from the carnage. She was also able to lead Shen and his henchmen away to ensure her child's safety. Though it was smart, it was a heartbreaking sacrifice. The messenger Zhang is next. When Vatra was occupied with showing off the prison, Zhang had been the voice of reason, insisting that they leave. He kept speaking up that he didn't have to see Tai Lung or where he was kept, and kept pressing that upping security was just a request Shifu made. It wasn't Zhang's fault that Tai Lung was able to utilize something so small in order to escape, so we can't rank Zhang lower just for that. Taking our next spot, we have Poe's father, Li Shan. While he has his moments of cluelessness, such as when he thought Mr. Ping joined them to make sure he ate well, he was on the ball. He was able to track Poe down with little to no leads. After he saw Poe fighting the Jade Warriors, Li was able Able to use the excuse of teaching Chi to get Poe away from Kai. I can teach you, son. And though Lee wasn't a part of the training that Poe put the rest of the pandas through, he was able to fashion some armor with Mr. Ping to fight alongside the rest of the village. Lee had also led the pandas to use their Chi to help Poe, helping to bring back a skill that had been lost for ages. Next, we have Poe's other father, Mr. Ping. 
After he found Poe, he took care of him as if he were his own. He was a traditional man who put aside his dreams and had been clueless to Poe's real dreams, but was able to be supportive of his son. My son finally having the noodle dream. He helped Poe realize the real meaning of the scroll by telling Poe the secret to his noodle soup. He helped Lee realize how they could both be supportive of Poe in his fight against Kai and had been able to adjust to the village in his own way, caring for the children while Poe trained. He had his moments where he wasn't always on the same page as his son, but he got better as the films went on. Now we're on to the college bound. These are the characters who are just a stone throw away from the top, proving they have the ability to be the best, but just fall short. Next on our list, we have Monkey. Once a comedian, he was able to use his sense of humor to distract opponents and take them out quickly. He was able to use his past skills as a thief and prankster to quickly grasp a fighting style when training in Kung Fu. Because Poe was able to fight with a light-hearted attitude, Monkey was quick to grant Poe respect as a fellow student, knowing well that being funny didn't discredit Poe from being a great student. It's clear that Monkey saw a lot of himself in Poe, which is why he warmed up to the panda so quickly. Next is the avian fighter, Crane. Once a janitor, he had been thrust into a situation where he had to protect himself. It was just a training field, but it was still impressive how he was able to use his fast reflexes to avoid being pummeled. When he had been sent with Mantis to seek out more information on Kai's whereabouts, Crane tried to get Mantis to leave in order to tell the others, and that would have been a good idea too, had Mantis not been so determined to take on the enemy himself. To Crane's credit, he's more subtle than the other fighters. That can make him seem unapproachable, but also makes him perfect for gathering information. Next is Mantis. His need to fight Kai got him and Crane caught, but Mantis was more than a tiny sass factory. He was also an experienced fighter that used speed to take his opponents off guard. When he was in a situation where he couldn't use this method, Mantis was able to find a way to surprise his foes. By being so still, they thought he was dead. Considering how much Mantis relied on his speed and flashy moves, this was an impressive tactic. Moving on to Viper. Like Crane, she had always been pushed into a situation where she had to protect herself, but Viper's technique was a little different. Since she was born without venom, she had been sheltered growing up, but when her father and the rest of the village were in danger, Viper was able to use her skills as a ribbon dancer to use the villain's own strength against him, making the beast punch himself in the face until he was defeated. She didn't have limbs like the other members of the Furious Five, nor did she have the ability to bite her opponents into submission like other snakes around that area, but she made do with what she had and was able to rise up and be one of the most legendary fighters in all of China. We also have to give her some credit for her patience when helping Mantis with his acupuncture on Poe, since that wasn't something she was really trained in. Next is the villain of the first movie, Tai Lung. Though Tai Lung was very capable in how he escaped from the prison, he was driven by revenge and hatred. That shallow motivation wound up being a big reason for Tai Lung's downfall, being taken down as he tried taking his rage out on Po. He blamed Shifu for his broken dreams and was deluded that he was still able to be the Dragon Warrior so long as he had the scroll. It would be interesting to see what Tai Lung could accomplish had he pursued a path other than that of the Dragon Warrior. And we can't forget the other Kung Fu Masters. We had to drop them a bit low in the ranking due to a few things. First, we have the Masters that refused to fight Shen that hid themselves away, claiming that facing Shen meant death. Second, we have the Masters that were able to be lured in by Kai, their chi being taken and used against the very people that they were trying to protect. Third, they clearly underestimated Shen and his weapons, facing him with little force and no backup. I mean, why would you take on a villain you know little about with only a few masters? You gotta be more prepared than that. Next is the villain obsessed with Chi, Kai. Once he learned how to use Chi and steal it from others, there was little that could be done to stop him. We have to hand it to Kai. He spent a long time traveling the spirit realm and seeking out enough power that he could return to the living. That took a level of determination that is hard to top. Kai was able to lure the masters one by one and gain their power, knowing just how much strength he needed before facing Shifu and going after the panda village. But his greed became his downfall, as he was given too much power, which destroyed him. It's hard to believe that Kai never came across the fact that there is such a thing as too much of a good thing, but seeing as not too many people were seeking out that much Xi, it's likely that no one considered that ending a possibility, save for Poe at that very moment. Much like Tai Lung, Kai's arrogance was a large part of his downfall. After all, Kai's own comments about the spirit realm are what gave Poe the idea on how to defeat him. 
Up next is the terrifying Shin. Though one could argue that Shin wasn't completely there, having been pushed to the edge in his pursuit of glory, Shin was resourceful. He was able to take a simple, fun display and turn it into a revolutionary weapon. He was effective in hunting down the majority of the panda population, knowing that they would be a formidable opponent for him. He was able to face the masters and defeat them, instilling fear not only in the masters of kung fu, but in the general public. And though Shin would get annoyed with Soothsayer and her way of foretelling the future, he knew better than to try and make an enemy of her. He knew in a way that she had been right about his family and his possible downfall, but he was willing to take that risk to achieve his dream. Even when Poe was obliterating his armada, Shin refused to admit defeat and demanded that someone, anyone, kill the panda. Kill him! Somebody kill him! Our next spot goes to Tigress. Having a tough childhood where she was sheltered from the other children, Tigress learned from a very young age how to control her rage and her strength. She recruited the other members of the Furious Five through a mishap with the list and made the team work. Nothing got past Tigress, and she recognized that Poe was struggling with something and had been able to get him to open up about his problems. She had found the panda village with little help in order to warn Poe about Kai and help Poe to reach a solution on how to fight him. Though Tigress wasn't the warmest or cuddliest fighter, she was one of the more wise and insightful. Finally, we have the geniuses. These characters are capable of running large-scale operations. They're dangerous and powerful because they know how to outsmart anyone. Truly Machiavellian when it comes to power. Next is the Dragon Warrior, Poe. Though Poe was brushed off as a spaz that had a lot to learn, he was also wise. He had been able to work out the meaning of the scroll with his dad's help and figure out Shifu's special attack to use against Tai Lung. He had been able to train the other pandas in a limited amount of time and defeated Kai with the use of not only his chi, but the other pandas. Though Poe struggled with the trauma of his past, he was eventually able to find peace and face Shen head on, telling the villain that it was better to let go of the anger of the past rather than allowing it to define him. Though Poe was aware of the Furious Five not accepting him at first, he tried his hardest to make a good impression. Those tactics didn't always work, with Poe often getting stuck or beaten up, but in the end, he was able to find his own style of fighting that was successful. Our bronze medal of brains goes to Master Shifu. Once reluctant to take Poe into his care, Shifu spent much of the first film living in the past and regretting his mistakes with Tai Lung. He was stubborn and refused to see Poe's worth for much of the movie, but when Shifu came around, his methods to teach the panda were unique and effective. By the second and third movies, Shifu was able to master some new techniques and even asked Poe for advice when it came to mastering Chi. Can you teach me? Shifu convinced the masters hiding away in their jail cell to fight alongside them and sent Tigress to find Poe and the panda village to warn them about Kai. Even when it placed his own safety at risk, Shifu was able to look at situations logically to ensure the safety of those around him. Taking the silver medal of brains is Soothsayer. An aide to Shen, she was one of the few that escaped his wrath. Her ability to look into the future and grant advice to Shen may have had some less than desirable methods for him, but she did her job well. She had tried to reach through to Shen for a long time, trying to get him to forgive his family for casting him out. When Shen failed to see reason, Soothsayer was able to find Poe and reveal the truth, seeing him as the only option to save not only Kung Fu and the people of China, but Shen himself. Stop fighting. Let it flow. Taking our gold medal of brains, we have Master Ugwe. Who else could have the top spot? Ugwe was wise, and his input was sought after by everyone. There are no accidents. He detected the evil lurking in Tai Lung's heart. He encouraged Poe to keep pushing through the training. Ugwe also banished Kai, knowing that he wouldn't change his ways. Ugwe explains that when he saw Poe, he immediately made the connection between the past and the potential future, believing that Poe could mend the tragedies that took place. Even in death, Ugwe was an optimistic and fun-loving character that strived to be an example. All right, that's the list. Let us know in the comment section if you agree with our ranking and tell us what we should cover next. Remember to hit that notification bell and binge our dumb to brilliant playlist, where we figure out which characters have the most wits. But most importantly, stay wicked.